machine learning, data mining, or good old-fashioned statistical models, there will come a point when you realize your model is failing because your input variables exist on widely divergent scales. For example, you may have data on the body weights of American and Japanese men. Exploring the data reveals that most of the lightest men in the data set are Japanese, while most of the heaviest men are American. So if you have a man who weighs 220 pounds, is he heavy or light? That depends on the country of birth. This is when you might want to change the scale of your data. You would like the new scale of measurement to reflect that 220 pounds is, a, is heavy if you talk about Japanese men, but one out of four American men exceed 220 pounds at the scale. To change the scale of your data, you standardize the data. The weights in pounds or kilograms are converted to so-called standard scores. You do this by subtracting the average value and dividing by the standard deviation. After you apply the formula to each and every value of your data, your data appear in a new scale. The beauty of this standardized scale is that it is easy to interpret. If someone tells you that the standard score is around zero, you know that the value is right around the average. The average value of whatever is being measured, you don't even actually have to know what the original units are. For example, in our data, a value of zero will correspond to the national average weight. For Japanese men, this is around 150 pounds, and for American men, it's around 190 pounds. If the standard score is about three, you know that this is a rare value that is on the high side of the average. If the standard score is below negative three, this is a value that is extreme, but on the negative side of the average. After standardizing your new series of data, the standard scores should have an average value of zero and a standard deviation of one. Most data sets that occur naturally, including human heights and weights, have shapes like a bell curve. For such data sets, we know that roughly two thirds of the data values, the standard scores will fall between negative one and one. So clustered around the average value. Now about 30% of the time, the standard scores will fall between two and three if we ignore the sign. Now these values are less common, but they still occur reasonably often in nature. So far so good. Now let me bust a myth about standardizing data. Many people who standardize data, that is to say, subtract the average value and divide by the standard deviation, they believe that when they standardize the data, they will make the data look more like a bell curve, more normal. That's actually a myth. If your original data set is normal, like our body weights, then after you standardize it, the standard scores will still be shaped like a bell curve. That's true. However, if you start with a data set that does not look like a bell curve, when you standardize it, the standard scores will still not look like a bell curve. Here, I wrote some R code that generate random numbers between the values negative five and seven. The average value of this set of 10,000 random numbers is one, and the standard deviation, which measures the dispersion of the values around this average is 3.5. Here is a visual picture of the data. You can see that all these columns are roughly equal in height. The height of the column is how many values of our data exist in a particular range. The smallest number here is negative five and the largest number is seven by design. By construction, 
when we build a uniform distribution, we require that every value has equal chance of occurring. So you can see that the heights of all these columns are roughly the same. After we standardize the data, you'll notice that the shape of this standard score distribution is still roughly uniform. All of the columns have similar heights. What has changed is that the midpoint of the distribution has shifted to zero, which is the mean of the standard scores. And you also see that the new distribution is more compressed. The columns are taller because we now require the values to be squeezed inside a smaller range. R is going to tell us that the average of the standard scores is zero and the standard deviation is one. Even though the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, the resulting distribution looks nothing like a bell curve. To summarize, I've addressed three questions in this video. Why do you standardize data? It's when you want to make different data series comparable to each other. How do you standardize data? Compute the average value and the standard deviation of the entire data set. Then run through your data one item at a time. Subtract the average from the va each value and divide by the standard deviation. How not to use standardization? Standardizing your data does not turn your data into a normal distribution. So if you would like your data to look more like a bell curve, you need to look elsewhere. For some ideas, consult my blog post listed below. If you like this video, share it with your friends and spread the word. Comment below to suggest future topics. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution.